Shalom, Shalom, Akim. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to your sincere Akim out there pushing the truth across the four corners of the earth. I am the brother Shaman, Great Millstone, Chicago, coming at, back at you uh, with hopefully another edifying lesson. Um, I'm here at the Chicago Board of Trade. And I was, I was actually uh, driving around, uh, me and two other brothers, um, and I spotted the building, and I saw the symbolism on there, which I'm going to zoom in, you can kind of see it. No, I, oh, you can't. Damn. I don't have a fancy phone. Okay, so maybe I'll put it in post-production, but if you look by that clock, what you'll see is on the left is one man. He's robed, and he has wheat in his hand. All right, then you have an eagle in the middle, dead above the clock. And then you have another man on the right with corn in his hand, okay? And uh, just to give you a little background on the building, this is a building where they trade um, commodities, okay? So all the commodities from basically the heartland of America are traded here. Corn, wheat, soybeans, all right? Whatever it is, you know, that farmers produce, you know, whatever it is they need in the agricultural industry, they trade it here, okay? The pricing uh, comes from here. All right, and um, basically, uh, um, I'm gonna just jump into the scriptures, all right, because when you look at these old buildings and some of these these buildings, like these, some of these buildings, they actually su survived uh, the, the Chicago fire. Uh, you know, I don't, this, one is, this one was built in 1840, so I'm not, for certain on this one, but uh, we all know the symbolism that's on these buildings, right? Like at the very top, and it's a lock I can't zoom in, maybe I can get it in post-production. You see a pyramid up there, and then you have Ceres. Ceres being the, the uh, goddess of uh, agriculture. I believe she's the Roman goddess, right? Um, you know, synonymous with the same gods as the other heathens, you know, Persephone, um, uh, some of the, you know, they're all the same. Right? When you look into it, it's all the same goddess. You know, sometimes they'll break apart. You know, the, the gods and goddesses, they'll, they'll break apart their, their, their uh, supposed abilities. You know, they'll give them to different people in different uh, cultures. All right? But they're all the same. All right? And the fact that they would put that on top of this building lets you know what they believe in. All right? This place didn't, never had the fear of the Lord. This is Deuteronomy 8 and 7. It says, For the, the Lord thy power bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of, out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, of, of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou may dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou praise the Lord, bless the Lord thy power for the good land which he hath given thee. All right, and this is not talking about America. All right, though this land is plentiful, this land is, has a lot of resources, all right, um, which Esau stole from uh, the so-called Gadites. That's why it's a, it's a Gadite on the right holding, a, uh, holding some ears of corn. All right, then, you, then on the left, you have an Egyptian. That's, that's what it says when you look it up. You know, it looks like a, a, an Edomite, you know, basically a, a witch, you know, with the, with the, with the uh, hooded robes on, all right? And then he has uh, wheat in his hand, all right? But when you look it up, it says he's an Egyptian. Right, so I guess he's a, 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 a Ptolemaic Egyptian, all right? Because we know the real Egyptians were dark. All right, then of course you have the eagle uh, right there you know, sitting up top between them, right? And the eagle is the the, uh, the, the, the representative of this place. All right, but um, jumping back to Deuteronomy, it says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy power in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwell therein. All right, and hey, 
you know, we like to say, and this is for all of the tribes, so-called black, so-called Native American, so-called Latino people. Hey, we had in our respective places, we had land, we had different things, we had possessions. Okay, we were kings. Uh, they like to mock us. We we was king. No, we we really were kings. Right? But we went off, and we we uh, worship these different idols. Right? Like Esau, they got their idol on top, and they got many different idols downtown. Man, they got the the, the muses. You know, they got uh, uh, supposed to be King David. You know, it's, yeah, it's, they got a lot of idols, man. <laughs> right? They have a lot of idols. Matter of fact, uh, the god her name they call her Ceres. You know. Which that's where they get the word cereal. All right, cereal talks about it goes into uh, grain. You know things that come from the ground. All right, those different grains and stuff, which those are a big st staple crop for this for this land. All right, and that's why the Lord ultimately brought us here. All right, not as a rest, because it says, "Lord, rise up." This is not your rest, but as a captivity. All right, and it, it talks about that in the Apocrypha. It talks about the ten tribes. You know, when they got away from the Assyrians, basically they sailed here, all right? They sailed across the waters, they sailed across the ocean, you know, the Atlantic, and then they came here, all right? And then they, they chose different parts for them to be, all right? And then us, you know, being bought here, because the scriptures say, uh, what does it say, Judah and Israel are in captivity together. This is where we are. We were bought here from uh, majority, mostly the, the western parts of Africa. All right, then you had some of us who were in Europe and North Africa and, you know, certain other places as well. It was Jake, Jake is everywhere, man, across the four corners of the land. But for the majority, you know, it was, it was West Africa. All right, we were brought here into ships, you know, into Egypt with ships again. And that's one of the main, you know, that's one of the main ways that we know this is Egypt. All right, because the original Egypt, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't go into Egypt, you know, the first time with ships. Okay, but back uh, dealing with this building, all right, because the thing about uh, Chicago, uh, with just some quick history, um, the reason why it was such a, uh, a big place starting off was because this place was, uh, you could link, you could go from the Great Lakes all the way down um, through certain canals that they built, and you could link, with, link up with uh, all the way to the Mississippi River. All right, the Mississippi River takes you all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So you could get, you know, all the different things that this place had to offer, the grains, the, the corn, you know, all the commodities, and you could take them uh, from here, you know, throughout the Midwest, you could bring them down and you could take them to the Gulf of Mexico, which uh, gave you uh, basically uh, um, a window to do international trade. Now here's a, uh, here's a quick scripture uh, this is Isaiah, um, excuse me, Ezekiel 28 and 3. And this is Ezekiel 28 and 3. And it says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding has thou gotten thee riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasure, treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic has thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thine riches. And even when you look here, you had Jake who came here on the behalf of the French like um, Dusabo, right, which they finally uh, they finally named the street after him, you know, uh, uh, the Lakes, you know, Lakeshore Drive is now DuSable Drive, all right? DuSable is credited because he met up with the Gadites. He had a good rapport with the Gadites because they were, they were all Israelites. That's why they happened. And then they were able to establish trade here, all right? And then he was able to um, understand, you know, once again, how to link the Great Lakes with the, uh, the Mississippi River, you know, going down, you know, past St. Louis and, you know, with the Mississippi and the Missouri, all right, and then you could come for, with different, on those different rivers, like I said, you could come over to the Mississippi and you could get down to the Gulf, all right, so all the things that were here, which, you know, Solomon, he sent those uh, navies of Tarshish over here as well, 
All right, and they deal with the, the scripture. It says peacocks, but it's really turkeys. They deal with the turkeys and the gold and the wood and all the things that were here. All right, and that's what made that's part of what made this place great. All right, everything that made this place great, when you look at it in depth, it was Jake. All right, even even the things to eat, even the way to to uh, grow the corn, grow uh, and harvest uh, the wheat and the corn and all these things and all these different recipe ideas. When you look into that, a lot of those things go back to Gad, all right? Cornbread, black eye, uh, was it black eyed peas, all right? The, the, the greens and all that stuff, that goes back to Gad, all right? Then later on, you know, Jake, you know, and everybody else, they took those recipes and now it was a part of their culture as well. All right, so hey, from the beginning, Jacob, and scriptures say, Jacob is the form of all things. All right, but I'm going to jump over to, uh, and, that, and that's another thing too as well, Salakia, because um, this place actually used to produce things, all right, and they were natural. This, you know, there was no genetic, you know, modified organisms, anything like that. So when the, far the farmers, they could come here to the board of trade, because they actually trade commodities, they could come here without the actual product. And they could make trades and they could they could do different trades and um you know they could do a margin call or they could gamble you know whatever but they could do trades actually without the actual product right, versus having to actually take the product to market and then you know you you worry about it might be a bad year or you know what i'm saying the the damn mice you know the plagues of the earth the mice or something or the locusts might come and eat up all your stuff you know but now you could do it without that, man. That, and, and that's what, one of the reasons this place became great, man. Traffic. They had slaves being trafficked. They had goods, resources being trafficked, commodities being trafficked. They had production. All right. Now, th when you look at this place, it, it really ain't a lot of production. All right. Because other nations, they still uh, uh, have an iron fist over their people and they rule, you know, over their people and have them working for, for peanuts. You know, they have. Uh, indentured servants in a sense uh, this is um, yep therefore thus saith the Lord power because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the most high behold therefore I will bring strangers upon thee the terrible of the nations and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom and they shall defile thy brightness All right? and we know that eventually these other nations which is, that's, that's happening very soon, they're gonna actually turn on this place. And this place doesn't have very long, all right? And the fact that they were put that goddess up there though, it shows you that they never feared the heavenly father. All right, everything with them was about, about God worship, goddess worship. It was never about pleasing and, and appeasing the heavenly father. And you can see it through their imagery, all right? They put those images up. They put all these different things up. I think they say that statue up there, it weighs about, it weighs like a, a couple thousand pounds. Uh, so it was no easy feat giving it, getting it up there. I think it, they also think it's, they said it's cost like $10 million, but this was back in the 1800s. So really today, you know, it's a couple hundred million dollars probably. This is Ezekiel, uh, this is Exodus, excuse me, 34 and 22. All right, it says, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the first and the feast, excuse me, of in gathering at the year's end. All right, so we already had a high holy day to celebrate, you know, and to praise the Heavenly Father for our harvest. All right, because that was one of the, the blessings. He said, the land will be fruitful unto you. All right, but if you go off, you know, one of the curses is, you know, I will make the, the sky like iron, basically. All right, the Lord will stop the rain. He'll stop stop all the you know the earth from growing he'll bring plagues upon us all right what do our people always want to do they want to try to go into these other gods and goddesses and and, and call on them um you know in order for them to be uh prosperous all right and that's not the, the way you're supposed to do it and this is leviticus 20 and 6. So I know as hell. It says, And the soul that, that turneth after 
such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. All right, so you go to these wizards, which when you go into witchcraft, you know, warlockism, sorcery, all that shit, which is the same, all right, the, 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 the leaders on that, the, the left-handed priests on that are those wizards and those warlocks, all right, the people who set all this stuff up, all right, and on the right, right here, directly to the right, this is actually the Federal uh, Reserve Bank of Chicago, so the two are, go hand in hand. And of course, they got their, their uh, customary pillars right there, too. You got a couple of other stone buildings around as well. Old, old buildings. But back to this, uh, Leviticus 20 and 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your power. And how can you be holy, right? The word holy goes into being separate you still got our people trying to do the the green corn dance and doing you know uh i want to speak to the ancestors so they can tell me no all right you're supposed to be calling on the name of the heavenly father through the name of his son all right for him to wake us to wake up our people wake up the elect because that's who he's dealing with the elect and for him to bring you know prosperity for us in our land because ultimately this land is going to be destroyed all right, and it's being destroyed now, man. It's, it's uh, through the spirit that the apostle was just bringing out Revelation 6, you know, the time of the, of the, of the, of the black horse. All right, because we're entering a time where food is about to be scarce. All right, they have a certain amount of oil reserves. So once those, you know, reach a certain level, those uh, fuel prices will go right back up. Right, this is Isaiah 19. And it says, it says, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, talking about this place, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. All right, and this whole place is going to melt, literally, <laughs> all right, from, the, from the, the destruction of the angels and the missiles. All right, and that's, that, well, again, that's what you have. This place is full of idols. It says, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And what are you seeing now? Uh, right before elections, you have all these different uh, mass shootings. You have all these different things which can uh, push the elections. And you got people on both sides who are pissed off. You know, yeah, this is all your fault. We need to stop the Second Amendment rights. No, no, this is a setup by the left. You guys already cheated. You got Trump out of office. So these Egyptians are, are, are preparing to fight. And that's what you're seeing, man, the, the creation of militia groups. And like the elder Malcolm brought up before, a lot of these farmers are part of those militia groups. All right, a lot of, you have a lot of those people from those militia groups who are also in the military. All right, so when that time comes, they have a way to survive and they have a way to live amongst each other. And then anybody else, you know, you, you're going to get the sword. All right? It says, and I, was, and I will set up the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And that's what you're about to see, all right? The fight for resources, the fight for survival. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them which have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the thing about all these gods, they all have certain rites and rituals that, that you're supposed to do when you're calling on them for your protection or for, for their blessing. All right? And you best believe these Edomites are doing whatever ritual. You know, they, they of course, they've updated all the rituals now. Now they, they mix them all together. All right? Whether it be a, 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 the blood sacrifice to do, to do this, like they showed you in um, uh, The Wicker Man, both the old one and the new one. Right, they sacrificed him so that they could have a bountiful harvest. They did certain sacrifices. Right, and to this day, they're still doing the same thing. They have certain sacrifices and certain things they do around this time, which is why you have 
you know, disappearances. You have, uh, uh, you know, from us, you know, we uh, have camp, you know, so you'll see different spirits come up and, and, you know, during certain times, those spirits are worse. You know, of course, you know, those spirits are very active now. Uh, it's, it's, it's now, you know, it's all, it used to be, you know, it, it was a break, you know, you might see one or two people and we keep teaching, you know, a couple camps later than something else. Now it's like every camp, you know, you got just spirits, man. Spirits are everywhere. Right, but 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 these 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 wicked spirits which hop on these people, you know, which is in part because Esau is a is a witch and a warlock, and they're uh, invoking these spirits and they're turning to these these demons for answers. Right, and there's no answer for what's coming to you next, man. Everything that's written in prophecy, it has to happen. Those demons ultimately they serve the Lord anyway. All right, it says um, that that was it on that part. This is Amos 8 and 1. Hey man, call a lawyer. How about she may I was shy for this holy word, for this script? You know, hey, that's why we're not panicking. We're not running around with our, with, with, like a chicken with our heads cut off. Right, because the Lord has given us understanding. That's why it says wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times. Right? All these different things which are written, they have to happen. And they, they are happening. This is Amos 8 and 1. It says, Thus saith, thus hath the Lord the Lord power showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. So like it had to let that pass by. It says, uh, uh, Amos 8 and 1. It says, Thus hath the Lord power showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Most High. There shall be many dead bodies in every place, and they shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the, the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. All right, so we call this man out for his worship, because uh, this is uh, this is Babylon, this is Egypt. All right, this is Mystery Babylon. All these places rolled into one. Tyre, all right, uh, you know, Chaldea. But uh, our, you had our people who, who, once again, they followed after and they practiced the same customs. Showing you who the righteous and the wicked is, man. The Lord smote us heavily for doing those things. This man is still up and running because this is what he's supposed to do. He's the wicked, right? The 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 the, the saints, you know, they're not supposed to do as the wicked does. Right? That's why we're we're beaten. You know, we were beaten so hard. But I'm gonna read this last part again because uh, our people were, were 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 using false balances and deceit and all these things as well. It says, um, this is Amos 8 and 5. It says, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by the sea. Yeah, they're trying to, the ephah is what you put, is a measure, you know, for for, uh, for dry goods, basically, right? The ephah, the measure, and all these different things. All right, so they're trying to get rid of that, and they're trying to uh, make the shekel great. All right, they're trying to make that money, <laughs> all right, and falsifying the balances by deceit. And when you look at the dollar, when you look at how everything is done through their commodities, their trading, it's all done by false balances. That's why it's depreciating. All right, that's why it's falling and it's failing. And ultimately, the Lord is not with this place. It says that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes and sell the refuse of the wheat. All right, the Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. All right, so the reason we went into slavery which we all, you know, we always harp on this as well, is because we disobeyed the Heavenly Father. All right, bottom line, 
through through many different ways, <laughs> many different ways, man. I looked through the law, man. All those laws you read, guess what? It was it was Jake who who uh, disobeyed all that shit. All right, this is Revelation six and six, man. And the, the apostle was just going into this because right, this is the time we're coming into. Uh, it says, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right, I'm a matter of fact, verse five. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see and beheld. And, and I beheld and lo, a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. All right, and the balances, if I'm not mistaken, they represent uh, slavery, all right, servitude. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and the penny, damn, everybody wouldn't be noisy when you do a video. And of course it's Jake. But the penny was talking about, uh, which was the penny at the time, it was the denarius, all right? The denarius was silver, all right, which represented a day of, of uh, a day of wages. I mean, I think denarius, I believe, means of tin, you know, that word den. I, uh, which some accounts say you could buy with a denarius, you could buy 10, 10 uh, donkeys. Right, but we know that the denarius, it represented a day's wage. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the, 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 the breakdown for that. All right. And basically what this is talking about is hyperinflation. All right. A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. So these things which normally was, wouldn't cost that much. All right, and now for a whole day's wages. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right, and the oil and the wine, they represent uh, the word. And then they also represent the elect. Because right, later on it's going to tell you. In uh, verse 17, it says, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? We know, of course, the elect is going to be able to stand. All right? Yeah, they, they won't be leaping like that, you know, in that day, <laughs> which is coming shortly. All right? Because, hey, ultimately, the harvest is in the hands of the Lord, man. Whether you send famine, whether you send plagues, whether you send, you know, scriptures talk about the blasting. I right? was talking about mildew. It talks about uh, um, the, uh, 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 the storms. It talks about the... Um, what is it called? The hail. All these different things which, which, which can destroy the crops, right, which can destroy the agriculture and all those different things. Right, because another thing they do here, they get the prices of uh, pesticides. Right, they get the prices of um, uh, uh, um, all the different things, you know, the machinery, the equipment. They, they factor those things in too. All right, this is, uh, let's see, they're going to send the guards up. This is Joel 2 and 15. That's okay. How about Shimei Awashai is with us? This is Joel 2 and 15. I'm going to finish off with this one. All right, it says, um, What you doing, right? Yeah, see, you Nah, 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 I don't have a cigarette. This is Joel 2 and 15. Matter of fact, uh, two, let's see, it started verse 14. Matter of fact, verse 12, I'm going to end it with these scriptures. It says, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rent your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenting, repenteth him of the evil who knoweth if he will return to repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the, the, unto the Lord your power. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast, call a solemn assembly. So all the different things of our heritage are being called back. All right, it says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts, let the bridegroom go forth out of his... Out, 
forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their power? All right, now nah, let me see. I don't think, is that the one that I want? I don't think that's the one that I want. But that's a good one too. Alright, because our people do have to repent. Alright, ultimately, that's that's what we're out here for, man, to call our people to repent and fear the most high. Um Yeah. Okay, Khan. Verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for, for his land and pity his people. So the Lord will have mercy on us, man. He's going to have mercy on us through the elect. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. And that's exactly what happens, man. The, the heathens, you know, basically were allowed to come here and given rule over us. All right, they were given uh, um, certain resources. Well, meanwhile, our resources remained depleted and Esau made sure that they stayed depleted. All right? That's why they put you know, the, a Native American chief up there, which when you look at all these different cities, you know, which are along uh, the Great Lakes, along with Chicago, you know, you got, uh, I believe, Green Bay, Okay, uh, you go up north, you know, Milwaukee. Um, you got uh, uh, Detroit, which that's another, you know, port city. These are all, all, a lot of these places are ports along the Great Lakes. All right, then, you know, you go further east. All right, then you, then you could go over to New York and you were able to take the goods, you know, across the land, you know, over the, over the, uh, the Appalachians, you know, before they started to get too big. All right, and then... Um, you could take them over to the, the, the coast, all right? And then along the coast, you have those port cities as well, all right? New York, Philadelphia, you know, Boston, all those different places as well, all right? This, but, but one of the ways that America was able to rise to the top was their ability to have, to have the traffic, all right? And for people to be able to buy, sell, trade goods, the scriptures talk about the sin, you know, sin that come in, you know, with, with uh, buying and selling. All right, but jumping back to Joel uh, 2 and 19, it says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and oil, corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you a, the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea so over between the euphrates and the red sea which we know to be the gulf coast all right and all these things are going to happen all right so the lord is going to bless us he's going to bring us into the real place that we read at the beginning deuteronomy 8 the real place uh flowing of, of, of milk and honey all right which is israel which we're going to which the lord is going to bless to be uh, plentiful and bountiful all right, so Lord willing is edifying. All praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yeah, they, they even put a light at the top on the statue to, to light up the damn statue. All right, Abad Babal. Shalom.